From anime style characters to real lifelike photographs, we can now do that using stable diffusion. Today I'll show you three ways to go from anime to real using automatic 1111 web UI and stable diffusion. And if you haven't installed them yet, check out my article or YouTube video tutorial on the topic. Let's dive in. Checkpoints. I tested a bunch of different checkpoints to see which ones would work best since, you know, anime characters often have very exaggerated features and some of the results weren't as great, but there were a few that did the job very well. One of them is Rev Animated Checkpoint. It's a more realistic rendering while preserving the exaggerated features. Pretty interesting, although creepy at times. Fantastic Mix goes a bit beyond that and starts to shift the features features closer to realism. And Photon actually does a very good job and characters become lifelike. So it was my favorite and I'll be using it for most of the tutorial. You can download these checkpoints from Civitai. All the links are in the description. As I said, there are three different ways to go about it. My favorite, number one, I will leave for last, as it takes the most explaining. So let's start with number three, loop back. I think it's not as effective as others, but I wanted to show it to you nonetheless. Open your stable diffusion and go to image to image tab. Write your prompt, negative prompt, drop the image. Make sure to select all the settings as per usual. But in the denoising strength, I would play with the slider and set it between 0.25 and 0.4 to test all sorts of different results. Then scroll down in the script, select loop back and change loops to 8 to 10. Keep the final denoising strength at 0.5 and hit generate. So what's happening behind the scenes is that the original image gets denoised at 0.3 and regenerated. Then the final generation that we receive goes back to image to image and it gets denoised by 0.3 and generated. And we repeat this loop eight to 10 times, depending on what you selected. And here's the final result. It's not the best, but it could be a good starting point for some other techniques used on top of it. Then I ran it again, changed the sampling method. I think this result turned out a little bit better. And I'm sure that if I played with more settings there, I could get an even better result. But it does take a bit of time to complete and uses quite a lot of resources. And that takes us to the second way to turn anime characters real, image to image. Using the image to image feature in Automatic 11.11 is a great way to change the style of your image. Start by picking a checkpoint, writing a prompt, dropping your image, take care of all the same settings as before, but pay close attention to the denoising strength because it is the most important factor here. Think of it kind of like how much you want to blur the original image before Stable Diffusion reconstructs it with the other settings you set. It works a bit differently than that, but I think it's an easier to understand explanation. For this one, I also suggest using the XYZ plot. You can find it in the script section, so you don't have to do the work manually. And in this case, I'm starting by testing the denoising strength in increments of 0.1. So we have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and so on. When I hit generate, it keeps all the same settings, just changes the denoising strength, which is great for testing what kind of denoising strength works for a specific image. In this case, I found that none of them really work. We could still play around to try to get something, but honestly, not all anime images will work with this method. This one didn't, but the next one did. Here we have beautiful Kano and I did the exact same thing with the denoising strength. And if we look at the results here, we can see that right around 0.6 and 0.7, there is something beautiful happening here. Now that I know that I like it anywhere around 0.5 and 0.7, I can do the same test, but in smaller increments, 0 0.52, 54, 56, and so on, and hit generate again. You don't really have to do it if you found the perfect image Right away, but I like to make sure it is the best that it could be. And you can see how even a small, tiny change can make a big difference in the final result. Pick the one you like and make some adjustments if you wanted to. For example, in this case, the eyes are no longer purple, but I need them to be. So I use in paint, change the prompt a little bit, and also use XYZ plot to test which denoising strength would be the best in this case. And there you have it. And if you're not very happy with the quality, here's what I 
I did. I sent the image to extras tab and I've scaled it by two using these two processors. Then I sent it to inpaint, mask the face, changed to mask only and used the size 1000 by 1000 pixels. Played around with the noising strength until I saw something that I liked and here is the final result. As you can see, image to image can be very effective, turning anime characters into lifelike ones. And here was another example of that same method. If you don't completely love the result, maybe change the checkpoint, maybe change the seed, or maybe change the image of the character that you're using. Sometimes that could be helpful too. Because like we can see here, no matter what I tried, this image just did not want to work. I got some kind of result to work, but honestly, it still looks a little bit on the creepy side. And that is simply because there aren't that many references in the model that have a girl biting on a bamboo and is a very, very specific image. So not all images will work. Just keep that in mind and try something else if it doesn't. This kind of process might take a bit of time. And finally, my favorite way to turn anime characters realistic is by using control net. It is just so, so powerful. So to do this method, you need to have control net installed. I have it all written in the article I mentioned previously, link in the description, but basically you have to copy this link and place it into the extension, install from URL, URL for extensions, git repository. Then hit install and wait for the message saying the extension is installed. Then visit the control net models page and download some or all of the models ending with .pth. Okay, just download them and throw them into the folder stable diffusion web UI extensions sd web UI control net dash models. And after that's done, you can restart automatic 11.11 web UI. But before you do that, for some of the images here, I also use the T2 eye color adapter. You have to download it separately. There's also a link in the article and you place it into the same exact models directory folder. You just placed all those .pth files. Another thing to keep in mind is that you will only have one control net tab usually when you first install it. So it is best to change it if you wanted to follow these examples that I'm showing you here. To do that, you have to go to the settings tab, find and click control net on the left sidebar, find the slider called multi control net max models amount, move the slider to two or three. I usually do it at three. Scroll back up, click apply settings and reload UI. And now you should be able to see control net unit zero, one, and maybe two, if you did the three models in the control net section, you can find it in text to image and image to image. Control net is incredibly powerful and it has a lot of models. So for our case, I decided to test all of them and see what kind of results we would get on an image that is quite difficult because we have these huge eyes taking up so much of the screen space. That is what's messing it up, I think, the most. All these different models have specific purposes and things they're wonderful at. So for this case, I decided to test all of them separately and see what kind of results we would get with just using one model at a time. Certain results turned out very nicely, but other kind of didn't help much with our mission here today. So then I took a couple that worked well, in my opinion, and I tested them by mixing and matching them together with each other, like depth and line art anime, line art realistic, soft edge, tile. They all produce slightly different results because now you're using two different models at a time. And so I settled on a few things that I thought worked the best. Tile, depth, line art realistic, soft edge, Kenny and T2i color. These are the models that I was using for most of my testing and that I think you should play with if you want the best results. For example, with this image, I was playing a lot and trying to get it to work. While the face and clothing look okay-ish, but the colors really did not match the original and I wanted them to match so that they would work better. So I went ahead and I used depth, tile and T2i control net to get the most realistic looking results that also match the colors that I was looking for. On the other hand, there were some images that no matter what I tried with the prompt, with the tiles, with everything, they just ended up looking weird. I love Zenitsu character from Demon Slayer, but I just could not get it to work at all. He either looked like an adorable, cute baby boy or like a 
a weird looking adult. So some things just don't work. Laugh it off and move on if you're not happy. Try a different image. And so here are the few results that I got with the control net method. Here I used depth 0.1 and tile 0.5 with a checkpoint rev animated. That's why we keep those larger style eyes. And I think it turned out quite lovely. Then for this one that I showed you previously, it's depth 0.5, tile 0.5 and T2I color 0.6. I think the colors translated super well. For this one, I only used the tile 0.4 and T2I control at 1. Tile 0.5, depth 0.3. And of course, there are some in painting things done on the faces most of the time because the colors of the eyes are wrong or something like that. This one I quite like, even though a few people think it's creepy. I don't know, I, I like it. So... <laughs> Tile 0.7, depth 0.7. And finally, Rengoku, which is my favorite example from these tests with tile 0.4 and T2I color 0.5. And hey, if it doesn't work out, just don't be upset. Try your best. Change it by increments of 0.1. A bit more here, a bit less there can make a huge difference in the final generation. Hope you enjoyed this anime to real video. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this craziness. And hey, if you're still watching, watch this one next. Cheers!